Welcome back to the show, everybody. Well, we've got the Ubri Conference. Uh, you're going to want this. Adrian from Medico, Adrian Tricani, and Stuart Alderati, the chief legal officer, discusses the Ripple case and so much more. We're going to give you the highlights here. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Before we take a look at the numbers, it's Glint Pay, ladies and gentlemen. Buy, save, send, and spend real gold instantly with Glint. I'm going to be sitting down with Jason Cousins, the CEO, very soon. If you haven't taken advantage, join the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of others who have. Become your own alternative to banking using gold physically allocated gold in your account and be able to spend it through your MasterCard debit card whenever and wherever you want. It is wonderful. Now let's get to this right quick. The numbers, the numbers are right now 1.48 trillion. Let's refresh that real quick. 1.46 trillion. Things are moving around a lot today. So 36,700 plus for Bitcoin, $2,027 and change for Ethereum. Tether market cap is 87.1 billion plus. XRP is 62 cents off by 1.3 in the 24 and off by 8.2 on the seven day to range of price very quickly 63 to 65 cents we'll keep an eye on it here let's refresh and see what's going on here ladies and gentlemen yeah that's where we're still at so we'll get into that but let's get started here this is Andrew Adrian Chicani sitting down with Ripple and talking about the Medico acquisition by Ripple and there's some really great stuff in here and I tell you something this is a chance to really understand who Adrian is because Adrian remains in place at Medico, and you're about to find out why. Boy, I like the I like the oof, uh, you know, in this guy. He's got it, man, no doubt about it. But take a quick listen to this. Everybody, very excited to see everyone here. I just want to make sure that everyone's aware that uh, kind of some of the basis and context as far as why we have Adrian here today. Uh, earlier this year, Ripple acquired Medico for two hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, Medico is a digital asset custody provider uh, in the uh, in the infrastructure space and and we love that. Now we're going to fast forward. And first of all, let me give a big shout out to XRP Drops, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, look, how many followers this guy got? Let's check it out. What? Three thousand six hundred eighty-three followers. Why is that not thirty thousand? Right? Come on, let's follow this guy. He does such incredible stuff for all of us. Let's keep it going. It takes a village, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get right here to the 22 mark. I want to be able to set this up for us. Take a listen to this clip, quick clip here. He did become a bit of a sociopathic personality. <laughs> he talks about like owning businesses and like how much is enough and and you keep going and when you feel like you've arrived you never feel like you've arrived and it takes a bit of a sociopathic personality to do what you what he's been doing in his career <laughs> so i guess um before we move on to some kind of a little bit more about the opportunity with uh ripple and medico let's say uh i assume that Medico was probably not courted by only one organization at some point during its life cycle. Uh, what led you to decide that the timing wise, as we were kind of talking about whether it's IPO or exit or anything like that, what led you to decide that this was the right time to sell versus any time in the past or holding on and waiting until a future date? I still don't know if it was the right time. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known. I've really never known. Uh, and it's been one of the toughest decisions in my life to the point that uh, I'm normally a person, and I have to, uh, that makes tough decisions and don't, that, don't, you know, I don't regret them, even if they end up being wrong. This one, I was not able to make it. I had to delegate the decision to my wife. <laughs> and, uh, and she had a hard time making it, but she ended up making it. Um, but um, the thing is, you know, the, one of the, the things that made me, you know, take the opportunity and I think, um, uh, you know, made, made this be a success, it's also that at some point you realize, uh, do you want to you know, continue by yourself and um, have this big volatility that I was speaking about, or do you want to de-risk and potentially have a much larger opportunity together? Maybe individually, from a capitalistic point of view, it's less attractive, but you've de-risked and you have a much larger opportunity now. And you know, for those of you who've done financial mathematics, you know, if you take the sort of risk-neutral expectation, you know, it's kind of the, you're adjusting the risk with the, with the, with the, with the, with the return. And you get to this question, which one is more uh, attractive? Which one is more rational? 
Um, I knew uh, before, like the year before, we had had two acquisition opportunities, real ones, um, that we ended up not, not taking. Not just because the timing was not necessarily the best, but also because the structure of the offers and what they, ended up, what they wanted to extract out of it, typically just take the technology and take the people and kill all of the client relations, uh, like big banks see what they do, you know, uh, was a disaster to all of the clients that I had shaken hands and say, well, no, we're going to support you for the next 10 years. And then I get acquired, then we just say, sorry, guys, you know, I've made a, a bit of money, but, uh, you know, uh, too bad for you, just change the provider. You know, this is not something I want you to do. That tells you a lot about the man right there. Not willing to sell people out he shook hands with. There ain't many of those walking around, ladies and gentlemen. And when we started the discussions uh, together, uh, if you remember, that was one of the first questions I asked. You know, what is the strategy? Are you going to essentially kill the client relations we have, or is, it, is the, the goal to build on what we have and build together? And it was that. It was, that. was the timing perfect? I don't know, you know, maybe I should have waited two years and sold it for four times the price. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, or maybe I would have waited uh, a couple of years and I've gone bankrupt. I don't know. So uh, I think in the end, um, uh, for both parties, it's been a good deal. I think we're doing great business together and I certainly don't regret the decision. And there you have that. Now, reminder, Medico has very big relationships with very big banks. So this is a wonderful, wonderful union between these two companies. Now, we're going to stop there, but there are, th that is an incredible 30 minutes. Uh, but we have to keep going because we've got Stuart Alderati, the chief legal officer, and I've put together the highlights here. And again, shout out to XRP Drops for this. Give him a follow. This is a great highlights clip of Stuart honestly being very candid about the situation and what they've been through and where things currently are and where we're going. So I want to go ahead and let that go right now. Take a listen to this. So, um, uh, you know, George read the mission of, of the SEC and uh, unfortunately, while that, that looks pretty on their website, all of their actions when it comes to crypto are having the exact opposite effect. Mm -hmm. Consumers are not being It'll come back. Being protected. Uh, all of the crypto bankruptcies that we've seen in the U.S., the consumers are left holding the bag in bankruptcy court, last in line as unsecured creditors. Bad actors are not being kept out of the system. See Sam Bankman Freed on trial as we speak. Uh -oh. uh, capital market formation, VCs are not leaning in uh, to this industry in the U.S. for fear that all roads will lead to the SEC. So they're doing, they're doing just the opposite. Um, and um, as, I, as I said earlier, regu uh, regulation by enforcement uh, is a really important term. I like it uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, not the least of which is the SEC hates it. And they, and they say that we're not, we're not engaging regulation by enforcement, we're just enforcing the laws, and the laws are clear. And that's the problem. But listen. Not only are the laws not clear when it comes to how to apply the securities laws to crypto. We have a regulatory gap that the SEC itself recognizes, and we know that because we got their emails. Mm. Um, but uh, we also know that because the SEC has been working intentionally, at least since 2015, to forced, foster greater uncertainty in the marketplace. And again, we have that from their internal emails. We know that the general counsel of the SEC advise senior officials at the SEC that they are fostering greater uncertainty rather than bringing clarity. And, and uh, George, I think you'll appreciate this point given the work you've, you do. Um, a regulator likes uncertainty because they can play with uncertainty by not defining the rules and therefore punish the market through this regulation by, in, by enforcement. And most, if you get an SEC <coughs> enforcement letter, investigative subpoena, it's a very expensive and grueling process. The process becomes the punishment. Our CEO has been very public that our defense against the SEC um, has cost us well over $100 million, approaching $150 million. Um, very few startup companies or the privately held It'll come back. companies have those sorts of resources, and that's what the SEC counts on, that they'll surrender uh, through a settlement and then they can point to the settlement and you say, see, the laws are clear, but that's not clear laws. That's basically leveraging the uncertainty to bully smaller players and uh, either, as I say, force them offshore, 
force them into a settlement or force them into bankruptcy court. Yeah. I should say maybe the, what's the effect on the incentive to innovate? Yeah. Well, that's the slow pitch that I'll, I'll answer in a minute, but just to go back um, uh, to hit some of the points that you've just talked about. A, um, a regulator's job, an unelected bureaucrat who's running that agency, who is a political appointee who will come and go in three, three and a half years, their job is to apply law, not to make law. Uh, and I think the agency's lost its way because it's trying to make law through regulation by enforcement, and that's unconstitutional. And the third thing, when you're faced with regulation by enforcement and regulatory overreach, fight. Defend yourself. There you go. Don't surrender, uh, which is what Ripple chose to do, which is what our CEO chose to do, which is what our chairman chose to do, who are named personally in a non-fraud case. There's never been a crypto case in the United States where individuals have been named along with the company with no allegation of fraud. They did it in our suit. Why did they do it? To try to bring us to our knees and surrender, and we didn't. So we fought them, and we won, and we won in a very important way. Uh, CC wanted the court to rule that the digital asset itself was something called a crypto asset security. That's the phrase they use. And what the court ruled on July 13th, and by the way, when I got notice of the decision, I was here in Toronto, um, so uh, good news there. Um, what the judge ruled on July 13th was that the digital asset XRP is not in and of itself an investment contract because it doesn't embody those bundle of promises that you need to get to an investment contract. Um, that's huge. That was the gut, gut punch to the SEC. That took the wind out of their sails for their entire campaign of regulation by enforcement. Mm -hmm. They hate that ruling because uh, it destroys their narrative. And what the judge said, let me look at the different categories of distributions from 2013 to 2020. She found some of those distributions, early distributions that were made directly to institutional buyers combined with a contract those were investment contracts. But other things like trading XRP on Coinbase, not an investment contract. Because when you go and you buy a digital asset on a Coinbase, you don't know who the buyer is, and the buyer doesn't know who the seller is, and the seller's not making you any promises, and you're not relying on anything other than, you know, you may buy it for speculation, relying on market forces, you may believe in the technology, who knows, but it says that's not a contract for an investment. Also, if you give away XRP to developers by way of grants, to executives by way of compensation, uh, to charities by way of uh, charitable giving, not an investment contract because they're not even an investment of money. Uh, so what the judge said, look, the asset itself, never an investment contract. You have to look at the transactions and does the transactions constitute this entire bundle of promises that may have the asset as the subject, but if you break away that asset, you're, um, you can't have that investment contract. So it's the bundle that is the security, not the subject of the bundle. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that, in my opinion, the behavior of the SEC set back the innovation in the crypto space uh, decades in the United States, which is a horrible thing. And my question is, do you think in the future, cryptos will be regulated by the CFTC rather than the SEC? Or will there be a new department? Or there will be no regulators at all? Great question. For cryptos. Yeah. Well, God forbid, we don't want a new regulator. <laughs> That's the last, last thing the United States needs is another regulator. Um, I, whether it's this, it, it, to me, I think ultimately there could be shared jurisdiction between the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Um, but we need a clear regulatory framework uh, for um, that shared jurisdiction to allow the, uh, the technology to work while serving those policy goals. So I think ultimately, hopefully through legislation, we could get through, uh, get to some shared regulatory framework. Does it matter that the US is crypto antagonistic if the rest of the world is getting on board? Um, I think that's a good question. And uh, it, it's interesting, let me start here, that after the SEC sued us, that's all we talked about uh, is the SEC case. And I remember, um, uh, our chief executive was visiting uh, Dubai 
meeting with the regulator, and he started the conversation to talk about the SEC case, and afterwards he got some feedback from our local uh, managing director on the ground and said, you don't have to talk about the SEC case. They don't care about the SEC case. And then as I went to London and you know, uh, started Singapore, they were really not interested. So I think, um, so that would suggest that it doesn't matter, but the United States is still the largest economy in the world. It still has massive influence. Um, uh, it still is very fertile ground for entrepreneurs, engineers, uh, people with bigger brains than me. So you would like to see the U.S. come along. And that's why I think at the end of the day, it does matter. We need, the U.S. has to get it right. And there you have it. But this is this is important to understand Stuart's perspective here, even though we all know where the, the case is and the decision is. Because remember, Fred Rispoli, we just spoke with him, and he had said that basically the the decision from Judge Torres at XRP in and of itself is ironclad. And as we move through the remedies and damages phase here, it will be easily, uh, unless there's some kind of settlement that happens that takes all of this off the table, it will, it, and there's no sign of any of that happening with the SEC, um, you know, we have to understand that that ironclad decision is going to protect us. And if the SEC, once the remedies decision is over, decides to appeal, that can't happen until like t late 25, 26. So that means until then, XRP is operating in this space with legal clarity as the only digital asset that has legal clarity. And I want you to think about that. Really think about that as we move through the next two years, if there isn't a settlement before then. And if there is, obviously, it will be an extreme favor of Ripple and the asset XRP, or they won't do it. They have made that clear. So this is a pretty remarkable uh, understanding that, to finish with what Stuart said here about the U.S. economy. And we say this on this channel all the time here, and he's saying it as well. The United States is the largest economy in the world. And you could say that it doesn't matter the way the other countries do, and they're moving forward, and we know that that's true, and that is beautiful. But at the end of the day, the United States has the largest economy in the world, and they took this three-plus trillion dollar global crypto market, global crypto market, and squashed it to a trillion. So don't tell me that the U.S. doesn't matter because at the end of the day, we all know that it does. And when it moves, it will move probably likely in the 11th hour. But when it does, it will be swift. And when it happens, it will bring the largest economy with it. Look, I don't want to go too long here. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice for me or anyone else. I hope you will join us in the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen. You are missing out if you're not joining us in there for 20 cents a day. You can't beat it. And inside of the Freedom Zone, we are talking about massive, massive topics that we wouldn't dare touch out here in social media. The hidden plan to control our food supply. You need to know about it. Bitcoin and Ethereum, are they just prototypes? We've got that and so much more going on in there. You're going to want to know about it. We want to hear from you inside of there. And on December 1st, I am going to give $100 or 100 XRP, however it works out. We're going to figure out what's the best way to do it to the best best comment that I pick out and there are many and the competition is great in there there's some super people inside of there so I really look forward to that I will catch all of you on the next one in the freedom zone